Hi. Hi. Today I have a prominent guest here on the channel. It's Mr. Alexander Lima. Welcome. Hello, bitches. Well, <laughs> today, today we're going to edit that out. Today, today uh, we're going to uh, check out an uh, amp that you built uh, mm -hmm. using uh, generic components. Yes. Uh, and, and see that uh, you can indeed get a uh, world-class tone out, out of uh, cheap stuff as well. So we'll, we'll, we'll play it and then we'll discuss, discuss it uh, okay. Yeah. after. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Let's, Let's go. Do it. <laughs>
it began in a funny way. You could call it it's a, a rescue operation. It began as a 18 watt kit and I was asked by a customer to see if I can fix it and it was in such a horrible state that the only thing to do was to dissect it totally and build something uh, totally f different and from scratch. And uh, since it was based on the cheap kit amp, we tried to keep the budget very low, but not lower than necessary, and see what, we can, what can be done with it. So I will tell you, the original things that are original components, well, it's only the chassis, this aluminum box, and a uh, couple tubes, sockets, some uh, uh, basic components. The, uh, in any build, in any amp, Usually the transformers, the power transformer and the output transformer are the most expensive parts. Therefore, I decided to see what can be done with a generic transformer. Which means it is a transformer that is dedicated for a, for a, speci a specific amp, doesn't carry fancy name, uh, I don't even know where they are made. It doesn't really matter, I don't care. The price and uh, electric parameters that were given by the manufacturer were enough for me to say, okay, this will work. So I have this as the power transformer, this is the output transformer. What we have here is a uh, rectifier tube. EZ81. We have four EL84s that provide 30 plus watts of output power. And we have three dual triode tubes. This is a 12AY7, which is used as a phase inverter. And there are two 5751s that are the preamp. And they differ from uh, the 12X7? The 5751 is a, you might, might call it a, a lower gain 12AX7. And why lower gain? Well, we can talk about it later. It has to do with uh, how distortion and overdrive is generated and it basically kills some of the preconceptions. Yeah, okay, can we, uh, can we uh, check out the... Uh the, uh, the, 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 the the innards. Yeah. <laughs> the guts. In the guts. Spilling the guts. That's all there is to it. The original part from the kit is the circuit board without the components. The components that were there were uh, discarded but the board itself was uh, was kept. And as you can see, like here, there's this opening where uh, original transformer, output transformer was, and the new one is, uh, is bigger. Same with power transformer. And, uh, well, this inside there, you have four potentiometers. The one on the left and the one on the right, these are uh, gain and uh, master volumes, and the two in the middle, it's the whole tone control, which is a bass and treble. Basically what is called a James tone control, some call it a passive back sandal, which is a wrong name, it's James, Mr. James. Sounds like a butler name. <laughs> <laughs> James, my whiskey, please. <laughs> so this is the front. 
Input high and low, preamp volume and gain, bass, treble, and master volume, which is called uh, which is called PPMIV post phase inverter master volume. Those who are into building will understand it, but for general purpose, it's a master volume. Uh, if someone uh, uh, would want to build uh, uh, an amp using uh, components of this cost, what, 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 how much would it cost to get these components and then uh, assemble it? A component by themselves. Well, the chassis is really simple. Uh, if you are reasonably handy, you can make the chassis yourself or you can buy a ready-made chassis. All you need to see that there are seven slots, sorry, eight slots for tubes. That's all. And some holes for uh, potentiometers and so on. So that's I don't know, perhaps eighty dollars for a chassis, for a small one. Uh, my estimate is that probably around around four hundred U.S. dollars to four fifty, hmm? thereabouts. Uh, we should be able to assemble enough hardware to build the amp because I think that stuff like resistors, capacitors and so on, most hobbyists who have a couple amps in their CV will have a number of what you call uh, uh, small components that are general, generic for everything. So um, yeah, I would, I would, because I, I didn't keep the exact of every everything I bought for it, but uh, my estimate it's around four four fifty dollars, four hundred fifty dollars. That's a lot yes. of lot of tone for a. Yeah, for then a then you need the schematic. Well, I think that copying any existing amplifier circuit, it's a good learning experience. If you do it. Start with a start with a simple one. Investigate what's going on and what happens. So, which circuit would you recommend for for, for someone who is starting off just just to uh, learn and get the get the good uh, view of uh, amp characteristics? Well, of course, the basic basic amps. Like everybody is beginning with a chump. Uh, I've seen people, total beginners, who have built successfully a dual rectifier. <laughs> okay, so smart beginners. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so yeah. it all depends. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, do you want to be a, an assembler of parts? Or do you want to? be able to put your own inventiveness, ingenuity yeah. into, into the app. And of course, starting with a champ and progressing, you can take a chassis like this and build a champ and learn on it. And when you change something, you will hear or not what difference it made, mm -hmm. and some people stop there. Oh well, if I change this resistor, it improves something, or it's worse if I go the other way. Well, this improves and and uh, makes it worse, and so on. These are subjective uh, qualifiers; they are not quantifiers. It means if you say, why did it? I will ask, why did changing this resistor improve string separation? Whatever. Oh, because I changed the resistor. No. 
We changed the resistor and something happened with the circuit. Mm -hmm. So if you go from that, I hear the, that it did this to my sound, then if you have, uh, you, are, you investigate what parameters in the arm changed, in what direction, what happened. And, and when, as, as you have, uh, uh, during your uh, career as an amp, and build there uh, you have uh, you you must you must have uh, had uh, numerous experiences of, of how you can tweak certain circuits uh, and and and, uh, and that will in turn uh, lead to other characteristics in the sound like like string separation and so on is is that something that is uh, follows uh, some rules or, or is it very much uh, specific sets of, of, of uh, components uh, that, that, that happens to, gi to give this tone or is it, uh, is it easy to have design parameters which, give, which performs well on a certain criteria? Well, it is uh, it's a difficult question because I'm, uh, I don't know, I'm probably in a different place now than I was when I first started out. Mm -hmm. So I built my first tube amp in 1966 or seven, something yeah. like this, and it was a do-it-yourself description in a in a magazine, mm -hmm. and uh, that was also assemb an assembly of weird components. The power transformer was uh, from a Russian TV set. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> the output transformer was from uh, from a radio, from a tube radio. Yeah. And the chassis I made in school. And uh, something funny happened. Is that this stuff worked, but. I couldn't get a clean tone out of it. It was distorting like mm. hell. I remember it was 1966. Mm. And it was the shadows. Yeah, distor <laughs> distortion was a bad thing. That. Distortion didn't exist. When we heard distortion on the satisfaction, then we thought all we all thought this was the sa a saxophone. <laughs> 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 we didn't That's, know. Yeah. And um, so basically, I invented distortion and overdrive by mistake. Yeah. Should have patented it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a huge mistake. Uh, the, well, the thing was very simple. The error I learned later, I was instructed by somebody who looked at my great construction and said, well, this Russian TV power transformer mm. is not capable capable to deliver enough current to your amplifier. So it's uh, running out of current and uh, distorts in the power stage. So I had power stage. I had power amp distortion. I didn't know I had, I had a golden egg. <laughs> <laughs> and then studies and the, the next project we had, remind you, where I lived, Having a Fender amplifier, that was like uh, reaching for the moon. Yeah. It was, uh, no, I mean, very few people could afford, and especially government artists' agency decided that this musician is worthy of having. And, and this was uh, b back when you lived in Poland? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, somebody in the. Uh, in my circle of acquaintances and friends uh, was awarded a Fender, Fender Twin River, something like this. I don't remember mm -hmm. exactly. It was like a huge machine, silver this and chrome and black and yeah. my, my, it was like, ah. Oh. Yeah. And, uh, well, we cloned it. <laughs> 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 uh, 
we had a friend who was uh, working at the uh, School of Electronic Engineering at university and uh, he was able to take measurements on uh, output transformers and power transformer and stuff so we got we made them ourselves so so you used uh, components from from Poland uh, we used to, to, we, to we used the, generic uh, com, com, components uh, so the power transformer you could there were like small workshop that would rewind the transformer yeah and I could also wind the transformer I mean, we were the first boutique makers, yeah. <laughs> because was... because nothing was available. Hmm. So, uh, well, what we made didn't sound like a Fender. So it's like with the when Marshall copied the Fender basement. Yeah, they, they, they used other components. It did. It did yeah. sound. It, it had a. It delivered the power, the deliver the clean sound, and so on. But the thing that we lacked, and that we didn't, we were young, huh? we were teenagers, we didn't understand like, really what is going on. Why doesn't it sound like that Fender? We made the transformer almost identical. We did this and this, and we had the the guys at the institute take measurements so we had the parameters. Every resistor was measured and so on. Well, it's very simple. It was the loudspeakers that were really crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they, they're a huge point. No, and we are, we were teenagers, so a loudspeaker is a loudspeaker, right? What, what yeah. speakers did you use then? We used a uh, loudspeaker made in Poland. It was a dynamic loudspeaker, uh, it was called dynamic, not electrostatic and so on. Uh, these were like meant for a PA systems. So, so they had, had a longer span, uh, wider frequency span? They had uh, well, very low efficiency, uneven frequency response, uh, weird. They just didn't sound like that. Hmm. It didn't sound like uh, like anything near the JBLs that were in that Fender. The on the first tube, that's mm -hmm. the the input stage. That's mm -hmm. the only thing that is uh, resembling a an eighteen volt Marshall mm -hmm. with two 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 triads in the first tube uh, jumpered in a so that they work. In parallel, that's mm. all. The signal goes goes in there through the jack socket, through the jack, and uh, basically goes all the way through. One thing about uh, wiring, or what they call lead dress, but mind you, this is the ugliest thing I ever made. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's my lead dress doesn't look uh, like that normally. It was kind of pretty to me. This is this is my uh, uh, concept proof a prototype. But anyway, in many amps you see that there is a signal comes in, it goes somewhere there, and then it goes back there. It's asking for trouble. Mm -hmm. If you see a schematic, then build it as the schematic shows, because schematic uh, drawn properly mm. will follow the logical and functional flow of signal. So that's where you, you got some components uh, down, yeah, down so here at the, at the pots uh, as, yeah, as well. So, uh, that, that's also in, in sequence yes, yeah, on an axis yes, this way. Yes. The only thing that I, let's say, well it also goes because you see the we start with the power transformer here. We have the rectifier tube close to the power transformer. Then we have four EL84s power tubes. This area here, those 
these are the smoothing capacitors. Smoothing is more proper name than filter capacitors. So they don't filter, they smooth the ripple from rectification. Mm -hmm. So it's the power supply and voltage, instead of being like that, will be smooth. So is it, uh, is it uh, heavy smoothing or filtering or, 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 or uh, is it uh, lighter? Uh, it certainly gave a, a lot of cool sag, this amp. Well, it is... Uh, the sag is not so much a question of uh, smoothing capacitor. Of course, if you put a huge smoothing capacitor, you will have a stiff power supply. But the sag is mostly delivered by the power transformer. And, and, and uh, that it can't uh, provide with, with the current? Uh, yeah, the, 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 the power yeah. transformer is rated to provide a certain amount of current. Normal standard for transformers is so-called 90% or like 90% regulation, load mm -hmm. regulation. If you mm -hmm. have, let's say, like this transformer in the standby, which means in standby only the, the heaters and the tubes are supplied with current mm -hmm. and the high voltage for, uh, for the amplifier itself is not. So you have idle voltage on the high high voltage winding. On this amplifier, it will be on this from this transformer. It is something like 300, 330 volts. EL84s are not specified for higher voltage than 300. So and once you go out of standby, that means the the tubes begin to draw current that voltage drops to 310. And that is idle, standby current. That's not idle current. And then depending on how much current you request from the transformer by how much output power you want to deliver, that voltage will drop mm. because the transformer reaches the maximum that it can deliver and then drops down. So a transformer manufacturer will specify so what is called load regulation, that which means how much the voltage delivered by the transformer reduces from idle, no load, to full nominal specified load. And it, Normal industry standard is 10%. So from 330 to 300, it's normal. That this was going from 330 to 310, but under full load at full power, it goes down to 280. But smoothing and filtering, there is a there is a play between parameters. Because if you have ripple from rectification normally will have a base frequency. It looks like a seesaw waveform. Its base frequency is 100 or 120 hertz, depending on where you are. 120 in the States, Canada, 100 hertz in Europe. So that's what you want to filter out. But to filter out the ripple, to reduce it, as much as you, as is possible, you need a huge transformer. Okay. Then, when you draw current, say you have a smooth output, then how much and how fast the voltage will drop. That depends on the smoothing capacitor and the bigger capacitor. The lower, it, the, the less it will drop, and the longer time it will take. So it's, uh, 
either it goes down like that and that is not much nothing much happens now this uh, this moving is important for the preamp because ripple the preamp is in so called uh, all the triads are in so called single end operation which means they are sensitive to any variations in the in the power supply voltage and ripple is a variation in the supply voltage mm. so there there i like to have very well smoothed supply and you see mm. that i have several there is one two three and three tubes in the preamp so there's one smoothing capacitor per preamp tube this one is for the power tubes this is for uh, intermediate screen grids and so on some people since these are energy storage elements they supply this supplies current and this to the one two three these tubes okay so i want the energy source close to the energy consumer sounds reasonable huh? that's why that's why i don't understand why people build dams you have the tubes energy consumers here and you have and they put together all those smoothing capacitors somewhere here and then they have like 10 12 inches of wire to the, to each energy consumer that is uh, then you have a lot of uh, old era amps on the market that hum and buzz and uh, when they don't need to when they really don't need it it's, and um, many of these amps <coughs> can be made very quiet and hum free only by uh, rearranging the the grounding scheme but it, it does say I, I, I know some some old Marshall amps uh, that, that has uh, the transformers placed in, in in different ways in relation to each other which uh, which has an influence on both tone and and noise level is is it an, an, an actual phenomenon that that, that it really uh, that that has an effect on tone placement of output transformer relative to power transformer. yeah it uh, will have an uh, an influence on uh, on hum yeah because magnetic field from transformers but, but on, tone, on tone itself uh, well if the leakage of mains frequency magnetic field leaks from the power transformer it can affect what is happening in the output transformer so in some amps you will have there will be a there will exist a magnetic field that is pulsating as the um, as the uh, mains frequency mm -hmm. And if there is a ripple, you will have the ripple frequency twice the mains frequency. That's what you will hear in the output, in the loudspeakers. Mm -hmm. Now you also will deliver current into the output transformer, which is uh, an image of your sound, of the signal. Now you have, you will, let's say that you take a single single frequency note uh, 440 hertz mm -hmm. a yeah okay so you have 440 mm -hmm. and you have the 50 50 hertz from the hum and you might have another 100 100 hertz from uh, rectification you will have intermodulation you will have 440 both 50 plus and 50 minus so we'll have 440 490 and 390 so and these are not harmonics to the 440 hmm. and you have a hundred so you will have 540 and 340 
what you might call ghost notes because they are not mm. like very high in in in, uh, uh, in volume in level but they are below your uh, fundamental mm. tone and then somewhere is this uh, intermodulation that is non-musical not harmonic has no still, harmonic. Still, still nice I think it's nice ghosting uh, in, in some well, applications well it's like there are dissonant chords some sound horrible and some dissonances sound uh, interesting yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's yeah Okay, mm -hmm. so this is what might happen. Mm -hmm. I do what I can to avoid that leakage from power transformer should influence the mm -hmm. output transformer. There are some uh, basic rules, and those who are, uh, let's say, very strict regarding rules will say that this placement of output transformer is breaking all the rules. This, at 45 mm -hmm. degrees angle to the... To yeah, this. so why did, you, why did you place it like that, like that? Because that resulted in lowest hum induction. So that was, that was by trial and error, or yes. was it something that you uh, yes. had... Uh, no, no, it's... Uh, you just just tweaked I, it. I tweaked yeah? it because yeah. Uh, yeah. what I do is a very, very simple thing. Is, uh, I have transformer not connected to anything in the circuit because it's the first thing I do is placement. Okay, so I con I have a transformer in my hand and do the output uh, secondary winding. I connect headphones, I have headphones, mm -hmm. and I power up the power transform. Just connect to the mains. Mm -hmm. I can. I know it leaks magnetic field. Then I move the transformer, turn ups and down, and we listen. Okay. And where the where the hum almost disappears, it's very seldom that it will disappear totally. Will always be something, but I found the mini. I find the minimum level of hum. So we we uh, we um, uh, I, I hope to uh, that, that we can do a video together also on uh, on the Sagre. Yes. Uh, that will be an, another video. Uh, we're going to play uh, the Sagre, and uh, we're going to go through the uh, the sound chain. How this from the, where you input the guitar? How is the signal shaped? Uh, all, all the way till you hear it from the speaker. Mm -hmm. We're going to. I'm going to play some riffs, and uh, Alex is, go, is gonna gonna tweak the amp, and we're going to discuss what happens. Okay. Yeah. We can That's do it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, we can do. We can do it, and uh, we'll explain the difference between clipping and distortion. Yeah. Clipping is not distortion. 